Hey guys, Brent Hull, Build Show. Talking about windows today, we've been doing these wood window workshops around the state and people have been saying, hey, I want that information. So, two part video, we're gonna, we're gonna put these together, show you why I would rather have this window in my house than a new window. Don't believe me? Stay tuned. Okay, so the reason why I would rather have that window than a new window is because it can look like this when I know it's fixed up after we've restored it, right? The whole double hung window system is a beautiful system. Now, historically, we're sitting on the outside of the window now, but historically, this was a system that had two sash, okay, that moved up and down, and they're counterbalanced. There's weights here. Uh, literally, when we're making new sash, we'll weigh the sash. If it weighs 10 pounds, we'd have two five pound weights, okay? So it's a pretty cool system. The way it worked was is that you would have convection air going through the house. You'd actually have hot air going out this way and cool air coming in this way. So it was like an early air conditioning system and it really worked. Now, we don't use this as much today, but what do you do about you know, energy efficiency? And that tends to be the biggest problem. The things we hear are, I've got to get rid of my historic windows because they're uh, in such bad shape. I've got to get rid of them because they're so drafty. I'm going to save so much money on my energy bills. I'm here to tell you that that is a lie, okay? The FTC in 2012 came down on five window companies for false advertising, saying that you, you could save 50% on your energy bills if you change your windows. That just isn't true. And the data now and to back this up is there. Let me, let me explain to you how this works. Because the real big point is, is that you're not going to see a, you're not going to see a significant savings on your energy bill if you replace your windows. In other words, it isn't worth it. Okay. Two things. One, um, energy, think about energy loss in your house. Okay. Where does that happen? Well, in a pre 1930s or forties house, you're talking about a house that most likely has never been insulated. So the majority of your energy loss is actually going out walls and ceilings, okay? The studies show that only about 10 to 20% goes out doors and windows, okay? 10% on windows. Now, the second piece of that is energy use, okay? When you pay your energy bill every month, how much of that is actually spent on heating and cooling? Well, only about 30 or 40% is spent on that. The other things are on appliances, TVs, hot water, right? Other things that are going towards, you know, your general use. So, because only 30 or 40% of your energy use is even spent on energy efficiency, the thought that you're going to change your windows in your house and expect to see a savings on your energy bill, it just doesn't happen. And that's why the FTC did that. So realize that the main argument is that these are so inefficient, is just it, bogus. This then is a very energy efficient window. And let me show you why, okay? Because we can take this window, weather strip it, add insulation to your house and to your walls, spend a tenth of the money that you would spend on new windows and have a very efficient uh, system on your house. Now, historically, even going back to the turn of the century, they understood that windows were inefficient. So what did they do? Well, I'll show you. They had and they used screens and storms, okay? So in the summertime, and these are the same size, okay? And they fit in the same groove, okay? So essentially what would happen is the summertime comes around and you put your screens in here, right? Your screens would go into your window and now you have nice fresh breezes with no bugs, okay? Wintertime comes around, you will take the screen out, you'll put the you'll pull the storms out and all of these would have been marked on the side with a number so you know which window they go in. These would go in and now you have a very energy efficient sealed house, right? So if you have an old house, you're in a cold, cold climate. In Texas, we our median temperature is 68 degrees, so we don't have a lot of cold weather, right? But if you're up in the Northeast and you have really cold weather, the storms are a beautiful way of making your windows much more energy efficient. So the idea that you're going to actually save money by taking your windows out, it shows that the payback time period is somewhere between 40 and 100 years. Now, on top of that, okay, most new windows have a warranty of about 10 years, okay? That's as long as the big manufacturers are willing to warrant their window. Now, when we build windows, we're building a 100-year window. 
Now, we do that because we're restoring 100-year-old windows all the time and we know how long they last. If you get the wood right, if you build it properly, it will last a long time. So, if you got a 40 to 100 year payback, but the new window you're putting in is only gonna last 20 to 30 years, you don't even get back to that payback time. So, you're putting in a disposable product. And that's really important to remember that your historic windows last a really long time. And now I'm gonna show you why, because we're gonna look at wood next. So wood quality, okay, um, essentially the production and harvesting of lumber, if you want to consider that, is really changed in the last 80 years, okay? Up until the 1940s, essentially all the wood that was being harvested in, the, in America was virgin forest, okay? As we moved across the country in the 1850s, 1860s, we essentially began to harvest, and as we uh, developed those areas, we harvested that wood. So the eastern white pine in New York, the longleaf yellow pine, and then into the 1920s and 30s, the firs and redwood out on the west coast. Now, what that means is, is that today most wood, especially production wood that would go into a production window, is plantation grown. That means it is harvested like you would harvest wheat or corn. Huge plantations in New Zealand and Chile where they grow trees and tree farms. Those trees grow, grow really fast, okay? And they actually chose a western pine called radiata pine to go into those plantations because it grows so fast. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you've ever been to the Redwood Forest and know about how dark it is in there, how it's kind of gloomy, right? Well, essentially what happens is, is a tree growing up in this old growth forest would grow very slowly, okay? Because it would, might get sunlight for an hour a day and it couldn't support a lot of branches, right? Sunlight allows the trees to support more branches. And so it would go up, it would go up, and finally when it broke through the canopy, then it would start supporting a lot of branches. So what you have with an old growth tree is this very long trunk and then these trees right at the top as opposed to a plantation grown forest where all the trees are planted and they're very short and they're growing up almost like Christmas trees. And until they get 30 or 40 feet high and the sun can't hit their bark, they have all kinds of tree branches there. Now, what does that mean? A knot is where it's grown into the trunk of the tree, right? And so if you have a knot, that's because there is a branch going in there. Old growth lumber is very clear there. The, the other thing is, and if you compare these two pieces of wood, this is a piece of, of longleaf yellow pine. It's very old. Um, notice how tight those growth rings are, like 15 growth rings per inch versus this piece of, of yellow pine from a lumber yard where it might have three growth rings in an inch, okay? And what does that mean? Well, growth rings are about stability, okay? So if you've ever seen a, lumber, a piece of two by four at a, at a job site and it looks like a, a, a ski jump, right? That's because it has no stability. All of those growth rings add strength and stability, okay? Second part is because it grows up so slow, you have a lot more heartwood, okay? Heartwood is the, the good stuff, right? You have two types of wood. You have sap wood on the outside and you have heartwood in the middle. The more heartwood you have, the more rot and re decay resistant it is. You can actually see on this piece of longleaf pine, the color difference here and here, right? This is very light, this is very amber, okay? You can see it too here. So basically, this is all heartwood and then this is sap wood. Now, Forest Product Labs, which is the government testing center for wood, and they have actually graded wood by how decay resistant it is. There's very resistant, moderate, and then non-resistant. Now, where do you think radiata pine lies out, okay? It is a non-resistant wood, okay? So the fact that it's grown fast, there isn't any hardwood, and it's not very stable, means it won't last very long. If you've ever had a new window or a new door that's decayed after five, 10, three, four, five years, right? It's because the wood's no good. And if you're gonna learn anything from this deal, in fact, I did a sh shot a whole video on, on, on good wood. Go look for that on the Build Show. The wood is, is everything. And so if you have a house built before 1940, most likely your windows are made with old growth wood. So why would you throw something out that's gonna last 100 years for something that's gonna only last 20 years? Well, you wouldn't, right? And so it doesn't make sense for us to get rid of those old windows because we've got a product that's gonna last so long. So the next piece, we'll talk about glass and why glass is so important for window design. 